It says here that Jesus became perfect, and let me paraphrase, that means he completed his education, verse 9, and now, here's the paraphrase, now he has become a professor in the same school, he's become a teacher in the same school to teach obedience to others who enter the school so that they can get eternal salvation. That's verse 9. So Jesus is there now as our teacher. And he's a teacher because he's gone through the whole thing himself. He can teach us all the way from kindergarten to the highest class because he covered it all. He said it is finished. I've completed my education. And so it's a wonderful, this is the pressing on to perfection. So what does a child do if he's studying mathematics and makes a mistake in a problem? Okay. The teacher doesn't say, okay, you failed. No. We learn by making a mistake. Here's the correct way to do it and learns correct. And the final examination, that student still gets 100%. But he learns through making mistakes and that's exactly how we learn too. As we seek to progress in the Christian life, we slip and fall. Then we confess our sin and ask the Lord to forgive us. Now, if you argue with the teacher, saying, no, 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 that's not a mistake, then you'll remain in the kindergarten forever. But if you're listening to the Holy Spirit when he says, what you did was wrong, and you listen to the teacher and say, I'm sorry, Lord, please forgive me, he will cleanse you from all your sin. So I told you that James was the first book of the New Testament to be written 15 years after the Pentecost. The letter of John, first letter of John was probably the last letter written which is about 65 years after the day of Pentecost. So what does John say? Now people have read the book of James and it's very easy to get discouraged when you read James. Oh, if I can't control my tongue, my Christianity is worth zero. Where am I? <laughs> and then John writes his letter saying, but 1 John 1 9, if we confess our sins, there's hope for you. He's faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, where people got discouraged reading the book of James, they come to John and says, hey, there's hope for me. Okay, I slipped up with my tongue, but I'm not lost, I'm born again, I'm pressing on, I haven't finished my education yet. I confess it. That means to confess is to say the same thing that God says. That's what confession is. God says that was not the right way to speak, like he told Moses. Moses should have said, yes, Lord, I'm sorry. It's not the way I should speak. And when God tells you in some situation, <clears throat> that is not the right way to speak to your wife. <clears throat> That's not the right way to speak to your husband. Or oh, that's not the right way to speak to your child. That's not the right way to speak in your office. You agree with God. You can be saved. Lord, I agree with you. <clears throat> that is, then I confess my sin. Or you can argue with God. And a lot of Christians do. No, no, no. I'm right in what I said. You're arguing with your own conscience. You can convince that other guy, I was right in what I said, you're wrong. What have you gained by convincing him? Your conscience is still shouting at you, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Listen to that voice of conscience. Don't try to justify yourself before people and say, I was right. You will never grow spiritually. <clears throat> and Jesus told the Pharisees, this was one of their sins. Luke 16 and verse 15. Jesus told the Pharisees, you people justify yourselves before men. You want to prove to men that you never did anything wrong. That's the way to damnation. That's why you'll remain a brood of vipers till the end of your life. You want some, you discover something was wrong, but you will not admit it. No, 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 I'm right. You see, particularly if you have built up a little reputation in a church, that people think you're a little spiritual or you're a little holy, then it becomes very difficult to admit that you were wrong. That's when your test, 
gets tested. We must always be willing to be absolutely honest. What does it mean to walk in the light? The Bible says the blood of Jesus will cleanse me only if I walk in the light. To walk in the light means just to be honest. And I've seen through my life that sometimes the newborn born again believers are more willing to be honest than some people who have been believers for 20, 30 years. Believers for 20, 30 years are sometimes very difficult for them to admit that they were wrong somewhere. I've seen that. It's pathetic when I see it. I've seen that in CFC churches. People are not willing to admit that they were wrong. But the newborn believer, he immediately says, yeah, I'm wrong. It's like, and then you see, I've seen those other believers, they never grow. I've seen with my own eyes, believers come up to a certain point, and then they get a reputation in the church as holy people. Oh, that's a holy sister. That's a holy brother who's very, very spiritual. They're not like these other carnal ones in the same church. And that holy brother sister becomes so proud. I've seen that with my own eyes. But he doesn't see it himself. Or she doesn't see it herself. You know why? Because they're not broken. They're not humble. They don't listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. They don't acknowledge, I have not yet become like Christ. There are a million areas in my life where I have to become like Christ. Let me humble myself and say I was wrong. They don't have the grace to do that. And I've seen people stagnate, you know, like a stagnant pool. There's water there, but it's a stagnant pool. Filth, muck, mosquitoes, insects, rubbish, all types of frogs and other things growing there and stinking. A stagnant pool. That's how many Christians are. But a Christian's life should be like rivers. A river is always fresh water. And I tell you this, my brothers and sisters, please take me seriously. There's only one way to remain like a fresh river. And that is if you're determined to press on to perfection. If you keep saying to yourself, I'm not perfect yet. I will be perfect only when Christ comes. But one thing I do, I'll press on to perfection. And I will never like Jesus said, justify myself before men. The moment I justify myself before men, I'm a Pharisee. Let me take an example. A husband and wife come into a little conflict and immediately one of them says, no, I, I'm right. What I'm doing, right, you're wrong. Huh. The way to Phariseeism has started right there. And they don't see it. They claim to be born again Christians. When a husband and wife have a tension between them, who should take the first step to restore that relationship? Very important. In the villages in India, the standard rule is always the wife. Because the husband is the king. He's forever the king. He's never wrong. And in heathen cultures, that is the way. The husband is never wrong. So, even if the husband slaps the wife, the wife has to apologize for some stupid thing she did. That is heathenism. Well, what is the Christian answer? If a husband and wife have a conflict, who should take the first step to restore that relationship as soon as possible? I'll tell you. God had a problem with man. Who took the first step? Who? God. Why did God take the first step? Because he was more spiritual. So if a husband and wife have a conflict, who should take the first step? The one who is more spiritual. And since both people think they are spiritual, they should be just running into each other's arms. Why isn't it like that? Because they are conceited. They think the spiritual one is the one who will not apologize. Wrong. The spiritual one is the one who apologizes first. Who is quick to acknowledge. He's more sensitive to sin. Spirituality means more sensitive to sin. When you become hardened to sin, you don't feel it. See, try it. Uh, if you put a pin to your cheek, you feel it. You put a pin to the sole of your feet, you don't feel it. Why is it? Because the sole of your feet is so hard. <laughs> so, the more sensitive you are to sin, you feel it immediately. It's the mark of 
walking in the light is you're very quick to sense be to sense that you've sinned. If the sense of having sinned is gradually disappearing in your life, I want to say you're a backslider. Even if everybody thinks in the church that you're a wonderful Christian, you're just fooling yourself. And one day when Christ comes again, you'll get the shock of your life. You'll get the shock of your life. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. She who has ears to hear, let her hear. That everybody thought you were so spiritual and Jesus exposes you for the proud person you were. And the people who suffered because of you. You could have been a blessing to so many people, but you were not because of pride. God gives his grace to the humble. So I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, always be willing to consider the possibility that you were wrong. And be quick to set it right, quick to confess to God. Say, Lord, I was wrong. I'm sorry. Forgive me. 